the way just before now, it can well be appreciated how significant it would be for same-sex loving people to cultivate a proficient language of serious self-reflection that introversionally enables and facilitatedly enacts becoming better psychologically minded as valuably homosexual. And, as I will again reiterate, such an interior relational language is so very much needed not just to overcome the awful effects of societal ugliness, past and present, but better yet, to multiplicationally strengthen being salutarily gay by cultivating the further procreative possibilities of that auspicious self-alchemy initiated by the historic subjective accomplishment of forging a caring gay self-acceptance. Indeed, when we appreciate that homosexual interest may have been a strong factor all along in the rise of subjective liberation altogether, thus of the psychoanalytic movement in particular as one of its foremost products and tools, then the more overt extension of gay liberation thinking into psychoanalytic comprehension now being required of us may not then seem like merely an ideologically otherwise haphazard marriage more like a post-heterosexist reunion, especially if we then consider the likely presence of considerable homosexual impulses in important psychoanalytic founders, such as Freud and Jung, not to mention additional related phenomena, such as Jung becoming surrounded by a number of strong women followers called his Valkyries, most of whom were lesbian. But the viciousness of homophobia, I think, has previously thwarted a better exploration of valuable gay being through opposite psychoanalytic terms in regard to the functional development by homosexual people of an accelerated psychological attitude. Today's more pressing circumstances, however, are working an emancipatory change in this unproductive status quo. That redemptive spirit behind the realization of a good gay identity has, in my opinion, unleashed an autonomously sourced, alchemical transformative process not altogether satisfied by rightfully gaining a solid homosexual identification and the expanding success of gay liberation efforts in our own time then only primes that more forward-seeking interest additionally. Moreover, so as to not eventually fall back, progressively speaking, from our current valuational accomplishments in the face of ongoing corrosive homophobia, toxically combined with defensive complacency over our just gains, along with the soothing reductionism of those assimilationist ideologies that have for some time dominated the same-sex loving community, and instead, to proceed into the greater emancipatory future promissorily held out today by the historically ongoing gay liberation movement, then we must attempt a next stage in gay liberation practice that includes and complements our prior extrovert gains, a more introverted stage much more thoroughly focused on enlarged psychological freedom, ultimate individuational fulfillment, and the properly corresponding collective conditions best expediting such personal gay enhancement. This is the fundamental challenge now facing self-confirmed homosexuals, in my opinion, to attemptively produce through this far-sighted enabling means the richest gay alternative to heterosexual biological procreation viably achievable today as the most favorable way to re-foundationally revitalize our community, our movement, and our contribution to the world. It is for the purpose of addressing this most critical developmental possibility in homosexual psychological engenderment that the Institute for Contemporary Iranian Psychoanalysis has been founded. 
find others at the Institute indeed feel that cultivating a gay-centered psychological language and facilitating a better refined psychological attitude among gay people are of principal empowermental and redemptive importance at this pregnant time. I am sure many other same-sex loving folk are also feeling this full chromatic directional import. Yet, the organized response by our community, as illustrated here in the Los Angeles area, has so far been rather mixed. Besides noting those ongoing professional situations, such as Antioch University's LGBT specialization, the Gay and Lesbian Center's Mental Health Services Department, and the Lesbian and Gay Psychotherapy Association of Southern California, all of which may be addressing improved psychological, homosexual psychological self-awakening up to some modest point, the only significant direct response I have seen so far hereabouts, in addition to the Institute for Contemporary Uranian Psychoanalysis and its sister affiliate, the Center for Sapphic Psychoanalytic Studies, founded by the late Sandra Galvin, is that effort being mounted by psychologist Don Kilhefner and his gay men's medicine circle, which ostensibly also concerns a gay-centered union approach to homosexual psyche, soul, and better valuational fulfillment. However, that approach at least as so far described in various print and web sources. While it is the only other organized attempt I am aware of anywhere besides that of the ICUP to, do, to cultivate a sustained same-sex oriented psychological attitude, that approach can at the same time be seen to be when sensibly looked at more closely, as we will do in a moment, unfortunately, psychologically shallow and homosexually trivializing in what actually strikes me as a manipulative fashion that, cor that contradictorily discourages realistic psychological mindedness, thus so illustrating how grasping human psychology more directly is still tremendously challenging and consequently why there needs to be a much more systematically cultivated same-sex loving response to the momentous individuational call being sent out urgently by ethical historical forces for a new stage of gay liberation theory and practice, one based on and dedicated to the sincere cultivation of homosexual psychological awareness and authenticity in a virgin political sense, one that, in its creditable honoring of ultimately spiritual homosexual valuation, is consequently truly modeled in the new ethical paradigm of fulfilled subjective liberation, not in an attempted simulation of that new ethos, as yet another defensive way to hopefully cover up a private entrapment in the old morality of the tired best the abusive morality of pain, humiliation, and disinheritance. <clears throat> Dr. Kilhefner and the Gay Men's Medicine Circle are to be applauded for raising community concern in broaching a same-sex loving psychological perspective at all. Yet their published pronouncements have persistently externalized the issues and signification of psychological phenomena usually in the complete absence of directly articulating any actual interior landscape of gay psychodynamic functioning and change. For example, in one of his more notable statements of the past few years, quote, gay adults, gay adults, where are you? Trusting the river of life, unquote, White Crane, summer 2006. Dr. Gil Hefner urged the improved homosexual development of that maturational status which he explicitly noted to be archetypally informed in the Jungian sense. Yet then the substance of such a gay adult was detailed only as, quote, fulfilling important roles in the gay village, unquote. Absolutely nothing was said in this entire article about what I would consider to most significantly constitute psychologically becoming a gay adult which concerns the sufficient maturation of responsible interior autonomy 
as a gay-identified person through the extended confrontation and self-alchemy of ego-shadow relations differentiationally within that can successfully lead homosexually to those increasingly spiritualized degrees of subjective qualitative presence, coherence, empowerment, insight, and wisdom psychodynamically described by Jungian analyst Edward Edinger in his classic book, Ego and Archetype, as treasured products of the spinal ego self-axis, which structurally ties us to the divine inside revelatory ascending into more conscious view. This problem in Dr. Phil Hefner's statements has gone on for years. Even when he probed into inner self-relations, matters were still exteriorized in an absolute fashion. For example, in the article, quote, Night movies, pay attention to your dreams, they are leading you somewhere, unquote. <laughs> Why the rain, spring 2007. Dr. Gil Hefner recorded on two of his own dreams and how he handled them, in the first of which he was driving and saw up ahead a police roadblock. And then that very day he really was driving, and there actually was a roadblock ahead that he was then easily able to elude, as he had outstanding warrants for his arrest. And therefore he had, quote, a precognitive dream that prepares us, a heads up, for what is to come, unquote. While in the second dream he was looking through, quote, the book of knowledge, unquote, when his finger could not move from the entry for dreams. This being an example of a, quote, teleological, unquote, dream about, quote, what your purpose is for being in this incarnation, unquote, which for him meant working with other people's dreams, as well as his own, as a, quote, licensed Jungian psychologist, unquote. However, there is nothing remotely Jungian about Dr. K. Lefner's handling of his dreams as recounted in this article, it appears to me, nor is there anything there about his own internal dynamics at all, or about anything actually psychological either. The treatment of these dreams is in point of fact really pre-psychological and literalistic, an unfortunate regressive characteristic also shown by other followers of this approach, such as Dr. Gil Uppner's associate Roberto Blaine in his articles for the LA Gay Magazine Frontiers, for example, quote, follow your yellow brick road, unquote, April 8, 2008, on how he has handled his dreams, his life in terms of his dreams and synchronicities. Indeed, this demeaning trivialization of gay psychology, while overtly seeming to promote its espousal, has continued persistently by gay men's medicine circle type spokespeople. Then, this past June, that distorted approach was finally publicly and vociferously criticized in depth by several institute colleagues of mine at the annual conference of the Lesbian and Gay Psychotherapy Association of Southern California. And fairly soon after that, as if in response, appeared a uniquely different Frontiers piece by Dr. Kalefner on September 9, 2008, that novelly proclaimed, quote, gay men in the great father's son womb the inner work, unquote, in which interior psychodynamic and archetypal topics were broached for the first and so far only more extended time, and Dr. Gil Hefner even refers to his, quote, deep inner work to heal, unquote, his own father-son womb, from which effort he founded a father hunger workshop 12 years ago. However, in seeming response to his criticized shortcomings, this fresh characterization of dark and difficult psychic matters for homosexual men still betrays a shallow and facile quality in merely skimming over the seriousness and struggle of engaging the negative, in biasing attractive qualities over mysterious, quote, unacceptable, unquote, qualities. In in suggesting that taking his father on your workshop will relatively easily and quickly solve deep psychological problems. In insinuating that he has so superiorly healed his own great father-son wound that he can now upgrade the general readers of his article in high moral contrast as unhealed cowards who can't wait to forget about what he's saying and, quote, hurry back to the Abbey, unquote. 
Furthermore, there is nothing straightforward, says Evergen. There is nothing straightforward in Dr. Kilhefner's piece about the actual subjective substance of any of the challenging themes he mentions. Only allusions. In particular, there is nothing about trauma, nothing about abuse, nothing.